mit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was Grace, by the way, who who chose that exact moment to come say hi. So it was great timing. Uh, you y'all can certainly hear me now, right? Hopefully. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yep. So cool. Uh, I am here to talk about uh, how I built my now page for my blog, which is an Eleveny site. Um, I was inspired by Sia posting something on Mastodon about two months or so ago about building a now page. And she linked to uh, one of my favorite domain names ever, nownownow.com, uh, which has a directory of a lot of sites that have now pages. I won't click back uh, because uh, Edge has been a bit cranky on some websites lately. And that website tends to make Edge crash a bit. Uh, but the about page is, is just fine. And uh, it does a good job kind of explaining what the idea is. And I'll TLDR what it says here, but basically it's a way of speaking at a high level what you're up to. So you know, like this year, I'm gonna be doing X, Y, and Z. Uh, it's been kind of spearheaded by a guy named Derek Sivers. I think I'm saying his name right. And he actually has a pretty uh, pretty long uh, now page and <laughs> updated as of today. Uh, so he's doing a good job of uh, keeping that idea updated. So that by itself is really, really simple. And like how you would do this in 11 e would be make a new file called now.md, write a sentence, and you're done. And like, that's incredibly trivial. Uh, and that is what I should have done. Uh, but I'm really, really good at not doing things the right way. Uh, if you look at my blog, like 90% of the stuff I write is, I had this really dumb idea. I, I spent four hours writing code for it, which is exactly what I did for my now page. So I, I'm going to show you mine. But like, keep in mind, like, I... I probably completely misunderstood the concept and just went crazy, but I had fun with it. Um, and it actually ended up being, I think, a really interesting use case for how a static website, because we don't say JAMSEC anymore, right? Uh, how a static website, how we could show data. Uh, because I have like four separate sets of data that are updated in different ways and presented in different ways. And like, I remember back when I was first talking about static websites five or six years ago, it was always, all right, here's how we get the dynamic crap back in. And the reason I fell in love with the Jamstack is that there was so many ways of doing it. And I built the now page intentionally as a way of showing all those ways. I didn't do it because I'm a poor programmer, uh, but I will show you what I did. And so for me, it's basically, you know, I. There, there's not enough companies out there that are tracking what I'm doing. So I wanted to build a way for everybody to track what I'm doing. And I have my current books via Goodreads. Uh, I have my current music via Spotify and I will reload this so it gets the latest. Uh, I haven't played anything for the last hour or so. Uh, and then you can see it's there. One little fun thing about this is that um, I am old, so I have like a bedtime ritual. And my bedtime ritual is uh, telling my Alexa device to play Inya, because Inya is very relaxing music. So if you were to visit this at like six, at six o'clock in the morning, you would see just like a whole page of tracks by Inya. Uh, so that's my latest music. And then I am using Letterboxd to uh, track the movies that I've been watching. Uh, I haven't used this service for a long time, uh, maybe the last three or so months. Um, happy to like real quickly say, great, 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 bad, eh, really great, really, really good, surprisingly good, and just a CGI fest and like no story at all. So I saved you from watching uh, about nine movies there. Um, although you should see the top six for sure. Anyway, <laughs> and I also am a big beer drinker. Uh, that sounds really bad. I am a professional beer drinker. Uh, that sounds a lot better, I'm sure. Uh, and I've been, <clears throat> I've been using Untapped for over a decade or so. 
Uh, it was one of the first phone gap applications and I was a big phone gap person for a while. Uh, and I generally will use it to track any new beer that I drink just as a way of remembering the ones I liked. So uh, you could see uh, the last new beers I drank and what rating I gave it. Uh, and by the way, I will say the Bourbon County brand stout by Goose Island is incredibly, incredibly good. So how did I build this? And it's all like a bunch of different things. And I'm going to scroll back up, way up to the top. And we'll start with Goodreads. So Goodreads used to have an API. Uh, they shut down their API in 2020 or so. They do have a data export. Uh, and I think it took maybe a couple of days, but they did send me um, my data. Pardon me, my cat's walking on my laptop now. Uh, and I actually wrote a blog post talking about that. And like the day I wrote it, like the best thing in the world happened. Every now and then I will blog something and then somebody will respond on social media and like, hey, were you aware there's a much simpler way of doing it? And I love that because then it gives me a chance to blog again and say, look, here's the better way of doing it. So someone had shared with me that uh, Goodreads actually has RSS feeds and you could see on screen there. Um, I hadn't seen that RSS icon in a decade. So I probably like mentally ignored it when I saw it the first time. Uh, but uh, if you want to use their RSS feed, that would be one way of doing it. Now you can't parse RSS in client-side JavaScript because cores won't be set up. Uh, and you also have to parse XML, which is a pain in the butt. You would have to do it server side, uh, but like on a Net Netlify, that would be pretty trivial. I didn't do that because I had already found that in your account settings, you can actually use a widget. Um, I haven't actually used a widget for a while. It feels more like a, a web of five years ago type thing. Uh, but it was also something that was done in about five seconds. So I did the thing where I picked my shelf uh, currently reading and I did a few tweaks, I think, to the style and stuff. And basically it just gave me like 5,000 lines of HTML and JavaScript, uh, which is totally fine, that I dropped into here. And you could see it's actually, so line 10 to uh, line 90. Eight, so 90 lines of code. Uh, I do like the fact that they actually have like a static version in here. So if somebody comes with JavaScript turned off, uh, they'll see at least something uh, that gets replaced with the live data. This is actually now a bit out of date because I finished this book a while ago, but I would be fine if you come in with uh, JavaScript turned off, you would at least see something. Uh, so I use their widget uh, because, oops, sorry, wrong window. I used their widget because it was copy and paste and done. I, I will probably at some point, because I'm not a really big fan of this UI, I probably will use a Netlify serverless function, uh, render it and just complete simple, boring HTML. And because, you know, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of kids, I'm tired, I work all the time, I read really slowly. Uh, I blog a heck of a lot more than I finish books. So I know that my current build status would always have like the latest book, I'd be fine with that. Uh, but for this case, again, I, I used the widget, it was the five minute solution. It actually took me longer uh, to find the widgets and the Goodreads UI once I got there, it was incredibly quick. So this is loaded client side. Again, I am thinking about changing it. So it's a build time serverless function. The Spotify list is 100% client side JavaScript. Uh, for that, I'm using the Spotify API and a really cool service called Pipedream. Uh, Pipedream is a low code, no code solution um, that lets you build workflows. So uh, you want to build serverless functions or you want to build things that work on a cron trigger and you essentially want to take different little pieces of code and combine them together uh, pipe dream is great for that uh, back before twitter went to more hell than it already was 
uh, I use Pipedream to build 20 or 30 really stupid Twitter bots that were fun and that I love and made me happy. <laughs> Uh, but because of, of the way Pipedream works, I could just copy a workflow and copy one small part to build a new bot. One of the things I really like about Pipedream is that you can connect a service. And I've done that with my Spotify account. And because I've done that, they do all the code for the access token stuff. So like raise your hand if you've ever used an API where the endpoint took you five minutes, the freaking authentication took you an hour or two. And it's like, once you got past that, bam, everything was super easy. Uh, there's a certain large search engine company in California with a lot of smart people where uh, their APIs typically are 90% off, 10% actually doing it. And so I love that Pipedream did that. So Spotify has a great API that has a recently played endpoint for your personal account, which I'm hitting right there. I added a second step to that to... Uh, map the data because they return a lot of information that I didn't need. So I got to adjust to like the artist name, et cetera. Uh, and then I just return it. And this is my surplus endpoint. I uh, just kind of give you an idea. You can go into any particular invocation and look at all the data. And this is just one Spotify item for one particular track. And you see, it goes super, super deep. And all this data was stuff that I definitely uh, did not need in my front end application, like all these available markets and stuff like that. So again, I strip all of that out. And actually I will show you that endpoint. Let me go back up and open that up. And you can see it, it takes a couple of seconds too low. And because I said it takes a couple, it took almost 10. Uh, but what I did in my front end, and let me close that. I will scroll down to my JavaScript and I do a little bit of caching. Uh, I like, honestly, I'm probably the only person on this planet who visits my now page. But uh, if you go there and you reload a lot, uh, the Spotify stuff is cached for 10 minutes. Uh, so I'm not necessarily hitting the Spotify or even pipe dream uh, that often, but I basically hit that serverless function, take the results, render it back. I could have probably done it prettier, uh, but you know, CSS grid, I think I used or Flexbox. That takes me a while to get uh, working correctly. Really appreciate that it's there. I love how great CSS has become lately, uh, but I'm still not terribly good at it. So that's my Spotify stuff. Uh, so first two options, this is a client-side widget, uh, which does have a fallback for non-JavaScript people. Second one is 100% client-side JavaScript, no fallback at all. If you come here with that JavaScript, you get nothing. That, that's on me. The next bit, the letterbox stuff is actually a serverless function uh, that's done at build time. Um, I may watch one or two movies a week uh, and I typically average a blog post once a week or so. So the, this keeps reasonably up to date. I will show you, actually I lied, it's not a serverless function. It is a data function in 11D. And it's just RSS. Uh, Letterbox does have actually a um, API, uh, but they provide an RSS feed for each person. And that's all I needed. So I grab that. Uh, I do a bit of magic on it. If we look at the RSS, I'll show you why. That's really hard to read. So we'll make that a bit bigger. Uh, so they, they've added a couple of things to their RSS feed, but in their description, the first item in there is always the movie poster. And that's actually what I wanted. I think movie posters are kind of cool. So that's why you see the regex here uh, where I grab that out. And so I get the name, uh, I get the link, and I get the image. Um, their RSS actually includes like your rating. Uh, you could see I gave Barbie three stars, more time passes, like the, the, the higher I would rate it. 
uh, and gave Avatar to one star. That's entirely accurate. Uh, but this is it, and that's pretty much. And you can you know click to see the links. And again, um, thinking about my site and how often it builds. You know, typically once or twice a week. Thinking about how often my data changes. That was totally fine. Uh, if I wanted to get fancy, I could fire off a new build every time I watch a movie, uh, but I don't need to do that. Now, the last one, uh, untapped, is something I was a bit hesitant to actually add to my site uh, because untapped actually got rid of uh, their API provisioning, so you can't get any keys. Uh, I signed up probably five plus years ago. And so I, I still have a valid key and it still works for my data, but like no one else can do this. And that sucks. <laughs> um, I, I, I love Untapped. That's a great app. But, you know, maybe it was costing them a lot of money. Maybe, you know, they were spending too much on beer. Who knows? Uh, but this too is just a data file. And... You could see right there, hitting their API. Uh, their docs are still public. Uh, finally, I guess they want to support people who still have API keys. Uh, but essentially, hit their their uh, their endpoint. It gets my check-ins, which are like social media posts. And again, I basically take what they give me and I remap to what I care for. And that gives me my my data. And if we go back to the front end. You can see that I'm showing the beer, the brewery, the type, and the rating that I gave it. And that is basically it. Yeah, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Y'all are blown away by my design skills. I understand. I know it's a lot. Just realizing how boring my life is. <laughs> you know, you're into all those things. <laughs> well, it's taken me like four or five weeks to read Wool, maybe four or five weeks to read Neuromancer. I, if I get 10 pages a day, I'm lucky. And Spotify, that's all day at work. That's like all I do. My wife and I were big Spotify people. Movies, easy at night. This is actually slowed down since I started playing Diablo 4. Um, and actually, I was trying to find a good way to get my Xbox and PlayStation history. And while that data definitely exists, and there's like, you know, the official Microsoft app, there's no real good way of getting that yourself, unfortunately.